Good evening, everyone. I want to welcome you to our Wednesday night prayer meeting. And this program is brought to you by the Central and Hope Seventh-day Adventist churches here on the island of St. Croix in the Virgin Islands. We want to welcome you to what is going to be an enriching program tonight. We have a special guest who will be presenting tonight. But just before we go into the program, I would like us to bow our heads in prayer. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, please assume a position of prayer as we go to the Lord. Dear Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you, dear Lord, that you have brought us so far for this part of the week, and you have promised that you will be with us for the rest of the week and the rest of our lives. We pray, dear Lord, that whatever our difficulties, whatever problems we might be facing, that we cast them at your feet, realizing that you are the God of the universe, you have created us, and you will take care of us. Bless us, dear Lord. Bless that all that will be said tonight will be a way of drawing us closer to you, realizing that the closer we become to you, the better it is for us, the healthier we will be, the stronger we will be faithfully. And when you come, you will usher us into your kingdom. This I pray in Jesus' name. Tonight I have a special guest with me, Sister Myrtle Rogers. Sister Myrtle Rogers is a registered nurse for some 28 years or so. Looking at her, you might not think that. But she is very active in the Seventh-day Adventist Church as a health secretary. She has been health secretary here at Central Church and at the Peter's Rest Church and for a total of some 10 years. She has three children and four grandchildren and she has a health and wellness spa and she is one of those individuals who believe in holistic medicine. So tonight, after we have a presentation by the praise team, the voice you'll be hearing is that of Sister Myrtle Rogers. Day by day, and with this passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here, trusting in the Father's Lord bestowed man, and I have no worry and to fear. He whose heart is kind beyond all measure, give unto each day what he deems best. Loving it is part of pain and pleasure, mingle with peace and rest. Every day the Lord himself is near me with a special mercy for each hour. All my cares he fain would bear and cheer me. He whose name is Counselor and Power. The protection of his present treasure is a charge that he himself he lay. As your days, your strength shall be in measure. This the pledge to me he made. Help me then, 
in every tribulation so to trust thy promises o lord that i lose not faith's sweet translation offered me within thy holy word. Help me, Lord, Lord, when told and translating, ere to take us from the Father's hand. One by one, the days, the moments fleeting, till I reach the promised land. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, our presentation is entitled, The War Within. Bow your heads as we pray. Lord, tonight we give you our will, we give you our minds. Please transform them so we can do your work. Help us to realize that our purpose here on earth is to glorify you and that we may do all the things that we can in order to be the best we can to serve you. Amen. Romans 12. <laughs> Romans 12, 1 to 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but ye be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, we, we are going to be exploring the laws of the mind. There are seven laws. Law number one states cause and effect. Galatians 6, 7 says, be not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. We reap the rewards of our actions. Blood pressure is not the cause. It's the effect. Diabetes is not the cause. It's the effect. Obesity, not the cause. The effect. Stress, it's not the cause, it's the effect. Dehydration and constipation also, not the cause, but the effect. What you get is the effect. If you don't know what's causing the effect, then you need to research it, find out, correct it, so that the effect can be lessened, corrected, or reversed. Now there are 13 things that can um, cause imbalance in the mind. One, lack of oxygen. So then how do you get oxygen to your mind or to your brain? Deep breathing. Then there's lack of sunshine. Now the pineal gland that's located in your brain sets the circadian rhythm. The circadian rhythm is when you get up and when you go to sleep. And you're in need of vitamin D. The sun is called the healer in the sky. The sun transforms vitamin D in our bodies. Get out in the sunshine. Sunbathe your liver every day. Now, the majority of my presentation tonight comes from Nurse Barbara O'Neill. And I'm very thankful and grateful to her for this um, presentation because it puts so much things into perspective. 
Another imbalance comes from lack of exercise. The devil tempts us by using our feelings, creating war in our mind. For example, you just got up out of your bed. I don't feel like exercising today. But you know you should exercise. But I don't want to exercise today. I'm feeling so tired. But you know exercising is going to help with your blood pressure. Oh, but it's raining outside. You hear that war? It's in going back and forth. And then you convince yourself whether you're going to go and exercise or you're not going to go and exercise. One of the sides is going to win. Warfare against self is the greatest warfare known. And this is um, explained in Steps to Christ, page 43. The soul must submit to God in order to be renewed and to gain strength. Sunday, there is a lack of sleep. A lot of us sacrifice sleep to get things done. There are not enough hours in the day, so we use hours of sleep to accomplish things. It's said that our research was done, and they realized that if you keep someone awake without any sleep for 14 days, you can actually kill them. They'll die. It's also known that if you're sleep deprived, you will be acting as a drunkard when you drive. It can cause the same amount of damage on the road. There are hours of power during the night. And the hours of power are from 10 p.m to 3 a.m. There are things that happen in the brain during those hours that cannot be done any other time of the day. But you need to be asleep for those things to be done. The brain needs to revive some cells, get rid of some bad thoughts and bad energy, but you should be asleep. It's not going to happen if you're up watching TV. It's not going to be happening if you're up cooking, sewing, washing, or working. Lack of fat causes also imbalance in the brain. The brain is the fattiest organ in your entire body. The brain loves fat. That's good fat now. There's good fat and there's bad fat. The brain needs good fat for proper functioning. Omega-3s. Now you may wonder why I have all these things spread out in front of me. I'm giving you some examples of some good fats. Now, you have walnuts, you have hazelnuts, you have brazil nuts, you have pecans, you have pine nuts, you have coconuts. Now, all good nuts. If you're going to buy nuts in bulk, it's better to buy the nuts whole rather than sliced or slivered they will last longer. Also, put your nuts in your fridge, your refrigerator, or in your freezer. It will keep them fresh. Once your nuts have become rancid, like you can actually smell a funny odor, you need to throw them out. They can help to brew bad cells in your body if you eat rancid nuts. So no matter how good the nuts are, if they're rancid, they're no good for your body. Okay? Now, there's some people who are allergic to nuts. Then the options are seeds. You have seeds such as flax seeds, chia seeds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, sesame seeds, hemp seeds. Okay? You can do just about the same thing that you'll do with the nuts with the seeds. All right? You can make milk with the seeds. You can make your desserts with the seeds if you cannot use the nuts. Make a list of all the nuts that you can have, since there's so many varieties, and use them. Remember, the brain loves the nuts. And try to use the nuts in as raw a fashion as possible. Just Sunday, um, the Pathfinder Club learned how to make a vegan cheesecake using nuts, and none of the nuts were processed. They weren't cooked, they weren't baked, they weren't heated in any way. Okay, so find recipes that you can use the nuts raw without heating. 
then lack of minerals. This also causes an imbalance in the brain. The brain uses calcium and magnesium, not just the brain alone, all the cells in the body. Now calcium constricts and magnesium relaxes. Calcium constricts and magnesium relaxes. So if we have calcium and not enough magnesium, the body's gonna be all tense and, and rigid and the relaxation is not going to happen. In order for um, the minerals to go into the cells, you need both the constriction and the relaxation. Both are working hand in hand. This is needed in order for the messages to go into every body cell, including the brain. Now, where can you get this calcium and magnesium from? Dark green leafy vegetables. Okay, so we can get the calcium and magnesium out of our dark green leafy vegetables along with Celtic salt. Now, with a Celtic salt, you can actually put some of the salt directly under your tongue and then sip your water so that the minerals will go directly into your cells. Now, calcium is not going to be useful to you if you drink a lot of caffeine because the caffeine leaches the calcium out of your body. Caffeine causes an imbalance in the brain. Then we go on to lack of vitamins. Vitamin B3 specifically. That's niacin. And niacin is found in nuts and seeds. Now, Dr. Needley spoke about uh, the nuts in, ref in reference to overcoming depression, depression the way out. In his book, he recommended the walnuts and the almonds to be used in order to help the brain to reverse depression. Nurse O'Neill says that in the study for depression, 10,000 milligrams of the niacin was used. Then we have lack of water. That causes an imbalance in the brain. The, the brain is a hydroelectric system. Hydro meaning water and then electricity. So the brain needs water in order to function. No water, no electricity. You need both the water to make the electricity for the brain to function. Lack of water equals dehydration. And dehydration leads to mental problems. Sometimes people are just deficient in water that can reverse issues that they're having. So imagine something as limited water in your system can make you have symptoms as if you have mental issues. Here we come to solarizing our water. So what is that? You're going to put your water in the sunlight. It's going to be in a glass bottle. And you're going to put it in direct sunlight for five to eight hours. It should be on top of a concrete slab, on top of a rock, or on top of dirt. Dirt meaning hard soil without um, the nutrients. You don't need the nutrients in the soil. You just need the stony soil. Okay, that's going to help with the conduction of the UV rays into the water. This actually helps the cells in the body to uptake the water better. It also helps the water to taste better. So try it. Solarize your water, sunbathe your water. The body cells love it. Lack of progesterone also causes an imbalance in the brain. And it's said that this is caused by chemicals that enter your body and also by 
the byproducts of plastic, okay? So plastic being absorbed into the body causes lack of progesterone. Do not leave your plastic bottles with water out in the sun and then drink it. That's a no-no. The plastic from the bottle is going to leach into the water and then it enters your body and then it's going to end up in your brain that's going to cause lack of progesterone and problems. Listen to this one. Excess food. Excess food can cause depression. If you eat too much, you can become depressed. Eating the wrong food can make you depressed as well. Excess pain can also cause an imbalance in the mind, in the brain. Then we go on to excess stimulation. So what causes excess stimulation? You see the children nowadays with their phones and with their games overstimulating the brain. Telephone overstimulating the brain. Computer overstimulating the brain. Internet overstimulation of the brain. Police your mind. Guard your mind. Be careful with what you watch. Too much stimulants are no good for the brain. Then we go on to poisons to the brain. What poisons the brain? MSG, alcohol, drugs, mercury. Mercury comes from fish. Mercury can also come from the fillings in your teeth. Mold. And listen to the last one, negativity negativity if you're always negative is going to poison your brain the frontal lobe is where the warfare against self occurs the frontal lobe deals with intellect judgment reason and your will remember those two voices that we're talking earlier about the exercise the voice that you listen to is the voice that wins. Whether you're going to get up and exercise or you're not going to exercise. Forgive yourself. Get unstuck. Don't be too hard on yourself. Move on. Negativity can take you down. It can bring on decay and death. Negativity can create cancer cells. It can create heartache, increased blood pressure, headaches, diabetes, and so much more diseases. Let it go. Give your frontal lobe to God. Bridle your tongue. So then we go on to law number two. Law number two of the mind says it's choice. Choose to forgive. Forgiveness breaks down the bonds of hostility, anger, and hate. It sets you free. Yes, they hurt you. Yes, they said bad things about you. But choose to forgive. If you do not forgive, you're actually telling God not to forgive you. Because the text says, forgive our trespasses as we forgive. So basically, if we decide not to forgive, that means we don't want God to forgive us. That's something to think about. Law number three says, our words affect our feelings. Be careful of your words. Proverbs 12, 18, 19 says, there is that speaketh like piercings of a sword but the tongue of the wise is health okay so be careful of what you say the fourth law of the mind your words reveal your feelings okay so your words affect your feelings that's number three and the words reveal your feelings number four 
don't let them all out. Proverbs 29 says, 29.11 says, A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it. He keepeth it in until afterwards. So, not because it's true, you don't necessarily have to say all of it. Proverbs 17.27 says, He that hath knowledge, spirit his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Colossians 4, 6, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. And Psalm 16, 7 says, I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel my reins also instruct me in the night season. Your seat of feelings or affection, that's your reins, okay? So once you practice this, when time comes and you need it, it will come back to you. Don't say everything. Psalms 39 verse 1. I said, I will take heed to my ways, that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle, while the wicked is before me. Some people are going to test you. Some people are going to provoke you. Hold your peace. Hold your peace. Do not speak until your frontal lobe is once again in control okay when you're very upset sometimes you're not thinking straight so hold your peace until your words can be pure and seasoned with salt so you can see the right things law number five says it's the law of adaptation we have a brain that can change the renewing of your mind. Proverbs 13, 20 says, He that walketh with the wise, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Also stated as, you're known by the company you keep. So, be careful who you keep company with. Law of the mind number six. Okay, we have seven of those laws and we're not on to number six. It says the brain can grow and the brain can shrink. So what can cause your brain to grow and make new dendrites and make new um, waves? Memorize the Bible. Learn a musical instrument. Learn a new language. Now, when we were small, we learned that song. Read your Bible every day and you'll grow, grow, grow. And don't read your Bible, forget to pray, and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. Well, that is actually true. Negativity can also consume the mind and therefore, the brain will grow in that way as well. You want to focus on the positive growth in your mind. The brain shrinks if it's not used. He said, you don't use it, you're going to lose it. You can also work on painful um, pathways and decrease them by focusing on good and healthy um, things. When people use drugs, their brain cells can die off. But, listen to this, there's hope for those who have used drugs or who have had some brain cells that are dead. You can rebuild new pathways. 
Research has shown that you can rebuild new pathways with what's called BDNF, brain-derived neotropic factor. So what's that? Now, brain-derived neotropic factor is a protein that stimulates new brain cells, neogenesis, new cells, and is boosted by those same eight laws of health. You know those eight laws? Nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, air, rest, and trust in God. Those same eight health principles. Ezekiel 36, 36 says, then the heathen that are left around about shall know that I, the Lord, build the ruined places and plant that that was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it and I will do it. Okay? So God has promised that this can be done and he'll do it for you once you give your mind to him. Now there are three things that can also help these brain cells to regrow. They're called three shockers. If you didn't hear anything else that I said tonight, listen to these three. Those brain cells can be stimulated by one, fasting for more than eight hours in every 24 hour period which means stop eating long enough for your last meal to be digested before bedtime so your stomach can rest for eight hours throughout the night. That's shocker number one. Shocker number two, you're going to take hot and cold baths daily. The cold part of the bath should be for 30 seconds. Most of us don't like cold water. <sighs> well, when the cold water hits your back, you normally shiver. That's what you want to do to the body. That shocking wave actually sends a message to the brain. And that's going to help to stimulate those blood cells, or those um, brain cells. Okay, so you can go hot, three minutes, cold, 30 seconds. Hot, three minutes. Cold, 30 seconds. And then shocker number three, high intensity interval training. Run as fast as you can and as hard as you can for 30 seconds. Run as if somebody is chasing you and your life depends on it. Then take your time to recover. Maybe about 90 seconds to 120 seconds, two minutes. And then do it again. You're going to do this for at least six repetitions. Run as fast as you can and as hard as you can for 30 seconds. Now, 30 seconds sounds like a short time. But if you're just starting, you may feel like you're going to pass out. But never mind. If you could only go 10 seconds at first, that's okay. We'll take the 10 seconds. But try to increase until you can get to 30 seconds. 30 seconds of fast pace, then you relax and go again. So those are our three shockers for rebuilding our brain cells. I hope you guys got that, okay? You're gonna fast at least eight hours a day in every 24 hour day. You're gonna do your hot and cold showers and then you're gonna do your high intensity interval training. Run as fast as you can for 30 seconds, then relax until you catch your breath and repeat. Law number seven, it says diversion. This is our last law. When something is so firmly denied as to refuse any hope for it, the brain has the ability to divert to other pursuits. So if your mind says, 
if you tell your mind that this thing is no good for you, okay, the brain has the ability to divert to something else. It takes 21 days to rewire your brain. Three weeks. Focus on only the good. Focus on good only. Turn to God and give him your will. Because it's going to be difficult for some. If the habit is smoking or if the habit is drinking or the habit is overeating, it's going to be a struggle. But if you ask God to restrain that frontal lobe, he will do it for you. Remember, you need to read the Bible, study the Bible, memorize the Bible, pray for mercy, and ask God for strength because his strength is perfect in our weakness. John 1.14 says, God became flesh. At this time of the year, we think about baby Jesus. God did become flesh. And he grew up and dwelt among us. He came to show us how to live. He showed us that we can have the power to overcome. He showed us how to tap into infinite wisdom, infinite strength, and to receive courage. Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 to 3 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Verse 2, the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And three, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. So once you give God your mind, and he has changed it and renewed it, the people around you are going to see the change. Because remember, our only purpose here in this life is to glorify God. And once we give our minds to him, we're going to in turn glorify him by what he has done through us. Praise and thank God in this war. Praise and thank God even through the battle of your mind. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 says, Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Lord, create within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. First Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Once we give our lives to God, he will exalt us. And remember, the exaltation is for his glory lord we thank you so much for our wonderful minds no matter what state we're in right now we know that it can be renewed and it can be better and we're going to give it all over to you so that you can make the best of it so that we can serve you to the fullest we thank you for our wonderful minds and we thank you for saving us amen My heart can sing when I pause to remember a heart they care is but a stepping stone along a trail that 
is winding always upward. This troubled world is not my final home. But until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, with joy I'll carry on. Until the day my nights behold the city. Until the day God calls me home. These things of earth will be and lose their value if we recall they're borrowed for a while and things of earth that cause the heart to tremble remember them will only bring a smile but until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, with joy I'll carry on. Until that day, my eyes behold that city. Until that day. God calls me home, but, but until then, my eyes will go on singing. Until then, with joy I'll carry on. Until that day, my eyes behold that city. Until the day God calls me home. We want to thank the praise team, Brother John Baptist and Sister Fleming, for those wonderful songs. And we want to thank Sister Rogers for that wealth of information. I would like you to know that you can always go back to Facebook and YouTube and review those song advice that she gave us this evening. So let us bow heads in prayer as we end this service, realizing that until then, our heart will go on singing. Until then, with joy, we'll carry on. Until the day, our eyes behold the city, until the day God calls us home. Dear Father, we thank you for this evening, for the worship that we had. We thank you for the wealth of information that has been brought to us through your servant, Sister Rogers. Bless all of us, dear Lord, who are participating in this program, and bless all those who are listening. And grant, dear Lord, that your word will not return unto you void, but individuals will put into practice what they have learned tonight and will renew their minds so that you can communicate with them much better and that we will be waiting for your return. Until then, our hearts will go on singing. Thank you, dear Lord, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.